Yo, what's up, guys? What kind of shot is that? Back in new vid. And guys, today, if you already read the title, I'm going to be talking about why Ultimate Spider-Man was the best Spider-Man show ever to be released. I can't get as wild as I want right now because it's like 2, 3 a.m. while I'm recording this. You know, I live with people in their sleep, so I can't really, you know, do what I want to. But enough said, man. There's no need for really an intro. Let's just start talking about why Ultimate Spider-Man, I think, was the best show. Because the show did introduce us to a lot of heroes that barely anybody knows, right? They got like Power Man, aka Luke Cage, White Tiger, which I didn't know existed until this show came out. You got Nova, which is like super duper powerful, like a whole Nova Core, and it introduced it actually in theaters and Guardians of the Galaxy, but... We, I, I figured out what Nova was from this show. And when I went to see Gardens of the Galaxy Volume 2, Volume 2 actually in theaters, I fell asleep on it, but my cousin woke me up. This was like 2014, 2015 when Volume 2 was released. I think 2017. Or was it? I can't remember for the life of me, but I thought Nova was going to appear like the one from Octopus Spider-Man. Little did I know like the MCU was his own thing and everything whatnot. But yeah, in this continuity, they're all teenagers, which is pretty cool. They did the same thing for the X-Men when they had a show back in the early 2000s as a tie-in for the first X-Men movie. But this one had them all as teenagers, and that's pretty cool because most heroes also discover their powers when they're young. So it's cool that in this continuity or this show that White Tiger, Nova, Power Man, Spider-Man, and Iron Fist are all... 16 year olds in high school recruited by shield you know it's just switching up the mix rather than it being straight 616 everything whatnot it was cool too because we had like people like nick fury all his shield and stuff we had agent colson which if you know in the first avengers movie he died i don't know why they had to kill him off but yeah they they killed him but in this he's like a mentor to peter in the high school too so that's pretty cool Drake Bell was an awesome voice actor for Spider-Man, and it's cool too because if you ever seen the superhero movie, Drake Bell had the leading role in that, had the leading role in that movie, playing as a parody of Spider-Man, the Dragonfly, and they actually casted him in 2011 for Ultimate Spider-Man, which I think was pretty cool. I guess three years later after it came out, I believe the movie came out in 2008, I'm not so sure. Along with that, every single episode, I believe, kind of was, you know, a cameo of other heroes, man. Whether it be the X-Men, Fantastic Four, Iron Man, Doctor Doom, Wolverine, Kraven, Sabretooth. It's just, bro, every single episode was something cool, including Spider-Man fighting the Hawk. And the jokes were freaking funny, dude. Plus, like, Spider-Man's a funny guy, but the jokes in this one, it's just funny, man. Even they had Deadpool, which I'm like, Deadpool at a kid's show? And it made a joke saying he can say the K-word. said the K-word. Spider-Man said kill. I'm like, oh, they can say kill at a kid's show? And Devil's like, yeah, wow, I can't say that. Wow, that sounds kind of weird. Whatever, right? And they did, in the, like, the final season, have their own little Spider-Verse thingy before a Spider-Verse movie. Had, like, Spider-Man 2099, Miles Morales. And it's cool, too, because Miles Morales actually came out in 2013. And the show came out in 2011. But during the show's fourth season, when the Spider-Verse thing came out, it was back in 2015 or 16, I think. So Miles Morales was still relatively new, and they still included him in his own storyline inside this show. So that's pretty cool. And it's cool, too, because even though Disney had bought the rights to a lot of the MCU and stuff like that, they were able to have other characters inside this show, like the X-Men, Fantastic Four. I think because Marvel kind of made the show and had other people produce it, it just aired on Disney Channel. So I guess it was kind of a loophole along with, you know, Sony having rights. But I think Sony only has movie rights to Spider-Man. I don't think they have, in like, you know, rights to their games and stuff. They could do whatever they want with Spider-Man. But when it comes to, you know, Spider-Man and Marvel to do something, they can do their own thing too. So Disney just has not have control. I don't know, but to wrap this video up, th this, this show was super duper great. I loved it, man. Even watching it now, like reruns of it, best Spider-Man show. So what do you guys think? Comment down below. I'd love to hear your opinions on what you think the best Spider-Man show is, or if you agree with this one. And thank you all for watching.